Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Hearthstone Champions League. Once again, I'm TJ. Joining me again to bring you the matches is from Follow Esports, Proto Hype. And we're about to jump into game number three, the winner's match. Or sorry, match number three, the winner's match of Group C. It is Nimsh versus Life Coach. The winner of this match moves on to the playoff stage next week. Proto Hype, what do you thought of the matches so far today? Honestly, they've been pretty exciting. Uh, I did not think that the most interesting match today would be a Paladin Mirror. That would probably have been my last guess, but I guess today is a, a day for surprises and good feelings, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, happy to be here. Happy to be casting with uh, the great TJ. Uh, you know, don't o- don't overstate time. it, man. Don't overstate it. Oh, I'm not it. overstating. <laughs> Everybody knows. All right, well, looks, it looks like these guys are underway with uh, the first game. It is Paladin versus Paladin. Once again, another Paladin mirror. Most of the players today did bring Paladin, so that's an interesting choice. We saw Trump with a Reno Jackson deck earlier. Uh, this deck from Life Coach, though, seems to be just, you know, sort of controly type, you know, between mid range and control. Uh, we haven't seen the full deck, so we don't know yet for sure, but uh, it's a pretty interesting deck. He's got Paladin Sky Golem, Keltazad. Yeah, when you uh, when you draw two different hands and it looks like you're playing two different strategies, I'm tend to I'm tend to uh, <laughs> more likely to be interested, I suppose, in uh, yeah. in that particular pad on this. But uh, yeah, Sky Golem definitely an interesting inclusion. Not something we've seen as of late uh, or at all in the last like six ish months, really. Mm -hmm. uh, largely due to Patron being so dominant and that card being so slow. But uh, yeah, it's uh, probably definitely worth looking at now. I would say, but. Uh, apparently life coach is onto this before anyone else yeah and as a quick reminder to people that may be tuning in now uh, for the first time these guys submitted their deck list before week two of league of explorers so they will not be using any of the week two cards so any of the ultimate cards they can use week one cards as we saw earlier with trump using reno jackson in his deck but won't be seeing any battle cry decks with brand bronze beard and uh, Nip's holding up a Reno Jackson sign. <laughs> Don't know what that means. <laughs> he knows what's coming. Next level BM. Who knows? Well, we, we did theorize that it could be a Reno Jackson deck from Life Coach. True. He does run two ofs of, we confirmed three cards. I believe Sludge Belcher, Consecration, and Equality, I believe. He ran two ofs. Uh, but you can still run two ofs of some cards and run Reno Jackson. It just you know reduces the chance that you'll you, when you draw Reno Jackson you'll get the heal immediately. Right. And we can confirm now that Nimshi is running Secret Paladin. Before we only saw a competitive spirit and we didn't see Mysterious Challenger. So now that we see the Noble Sacrifice, most likely going to see a Mysterious Challenger at some point. Hmm. So if he has the competitive spirit and two Aldors. I have to. I have to wonder what the what the cuts were. I think he would have to be running only one noble sack at that point. Maybe not two, and then just running a package of all ones and not running repentance. Mm -hmm. um, that seems like it would be a solid compromise. Yeah, he seems to value the competitive spirit over the repentance redemption. Yeah, and if he's playing uh, hundred papers, I kind of have to agree. Yeah. So Thorsten coming down. Uh, on six for life coach. Uh, I have to think that that's probably the play there. Uh, being able to play Belcher and uh, Shredder on the following turn if he really wants to. Uh, definitely a, a solid pickup. It's a lot of power to be putting on the table in one turn. But uh, mm -hmm. Nimsh does have a Doctor Six coming down this turn on that board. That's incredibly scary. Yeah. Especially if you're life coach and you've already used your Consecrate. That's, uh, that's pretty much a nightmare scenario. Yeah, he does have to trade in and kill off this uh, Emperor Thorsan first, but you know, it's still going to be a really scary board to go into. And we'll see how many secrets he pulls. It is three, so we'll have to see next turn of, uh, next turn of Noble Sacrifice is highlighted. I imagine he just runs like two Noble Sacks, two Avenge, and one Competitive Spirit, maybe? Interesting. I think, uh, hmm. No Avenge. Let's see. Okay, if he's running a one-one-one -one -one split, it's probably it's probably Avenge, Competitive Spirit, and Redemption. I would I would just guess. Um, okay. But if he's playing Haunted Creepers, uh, he may have opted to cut Redemption entirely. Maybe he has like uh, some. I don't know. Even even if you have Haunted Creeper, it's still a decent play. Uh, getting getting those one ones on the table. So yeah. he gets the Competitive Spirit proc. We knew that one. And uh, and Noble Sacrifice is highlighted. So 
the wow, other okay. two secrets are unique. So most likely redemption and avenge, but could be. Uh, I guess uh, I, I I wouldn't imagine there would be anything else, but I've, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely it's I've eye for an eye. eye. It def- <laughs> you caught me. Cog hammer doesn't hit the best target. He was hoping that was going to hit either the Masir's challenge or the pilot shooter to allow him to trade into the Belcher. Man, there's been a remarkable free. amount of like charge murgling going on off of these shredders. <laughs> well, the, the other two were off Murloc Knights. We saw two oh, Blue right, right, Warriors right, yeah. earlier off Murloc Knights. So this is interesting. And goes ahead and plays the Noble Sacrifice as well. And Life Coach is at nine health. So this is the power of Secret Paladin. You curve out. Turn 6, if you play the Mysterious Challenger, that board is so hard to deal with. And now going into turn 8, Nimsh has Tyrion Forging, which... Uh, well, it doesn't even matter. Life Coach is just dead anyway, unless he gets... No, I don't think any juggles would have mattered there. Man, competitive spirit. Really uh, really showing its worth in these games, even as a one-off. But it's yeah. been incredible so far. It was basically a free Blessing of Kings, because it gave 4-4 four, yeah, four worth of stats. Bodies. Man, that's gross. Mm -hmm. And so the only hope here, nope. He can't even kill off his own Shredder. It wouldn't have even mattered. He could have gotten an Oyotron, which would have blocked some damage, but I think that uh, wouldn't have mattered anyway. And with that, Nipsh is going to take a quick 1-0 lead, showing the why Secret Paladin is so powerful at the moment. Life Coach's deck, I think, is just a little bit too slow to go up against, you know, faster, For sure. uh, more punishing tempo decks like that. And Nimsh is rewarded. Um, I think I, the point may have been able to be made uh, that he should have maybe held the consecrate uh, on that on that board where he only had a uh, a cog hammered up haunted creeper and yeah. the other creature. But you know, I, if he's only playing one, no, we know he's playing two consecrates. That was one of the confirmed two of us. So yeah, okay, maybe he had to. Maybe he knows. Uh, maybe he knows something I don't. But well, I feel like I'm saving yeah. it might have been a little. Mm -hmm. I feel like the thing about Secret Paladin is you're always afraid that you're going to fall too far behind by the sure, time a serious sure. challenger comes out. So you try and deal with the board proactively. Absolutely. And that's one of the ways that makes it strong is because you feel like you need to utilize removal early in the game to try and, you know, stop the inevitable right, right. Mysterious Challenger from doing too much damage to you. And then in the end, you he plays Mysterious Challenger anyway. And even you one, don't have removal. Right. Even one more creature is just uh, really brutal mm -hmm. coming back on the on the crackback, especially if you're playing competitive spirit. Yeah. So Life Coach going to throw out the mid-range Druid for this next matchup. Nimsh still has Warrior and uh, Druid remaining left for him too. So he has Paladin, Warrior, Druid as his three decks, if I remember correctly. And so uh, Patron Warrior is going to be... This is the first Patron Warrior. Or, well... This is the only patron warrior we've seen today. We did see Nimsh take a win with it earlier yes. in his match versus Dog. A very interesting game, no doubt. And uh, a game where Nimsh definitely utilized his shredders to the best of his ability. <laughs> what are those? What are those? Those are real-life Leave Explorers cards, it feels. Wow, I'm a little jealous. Nimsh has a, a lot of Hearthstone memor memorabilia. I can see that. <laughs> I pride myself in having a lot of Hearthstone memorabilia. Because I have two pillows. And he has a lot. <laughs> two mugs. Three murlocs. And I think he even has more than me, and I'm jealous. And a mysterious challenger in a pear tree. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, this matchup is quite a bit different than what it used to be. Um... You can still make a lot of patrons on turn 5, which Druids had a lot of uh, tough times to deal with in the past because they sort of lack the spot removal, as swipe is not a reliable way to deal with patrons. Sure. But you, you can't get those big turns later on as a secondary win condition because Druids actually do have you know decent amount of things to ha remove a Frothing Berserker off the board, whether right. it be swipe or wrath if it's damaged or even like a charged Druid of the Claw. Um, so there's... It's still a tough matchup if the Patron Warrior can get out those big patients earlier, but Druids can run away with the game a lot easier than they used to be able to because they don't yeah. have to worry about that secondary win condition. Yeah, very right. Um, and I, we missed something pretty interesting. Uh, 
lot of these a lot of these darn asses ask for interns aren't actually as cookie cutter as they as they seem to be and life coach showed that uh on on the draw here by not coining it out on turn one against warrior and he forced uh seeing that he didn't have a three drop or any acceleration uh or clear play hmm. uh, post aspirant he actually just decided to save the coin and use it on two and he wound up wound up forcing uh nymphs to fire war axe on three off kirk and uh wind up a a good shredder play and i like that a lot uh it's unfortunate that or for life coach that nymphs had the the course there to fill out that curve but that was that was a solid play yeah i i like the the way you point that out is forcing your opponent to play off curve you're still getting the ramp you still you know right, have right. The, you can save that coin for something later on he's going to curve into pilot shredder regardless so if he has a fire war axe he's going to play it anyway on turn two you might as well not give him that extra value and throw away the coin now life coach has a tough choice though uh, he inter does. Innervate the worst hand is almost always going to be a strong play. And it actually is the first charge of Despite. So he will force uh, Nymph to have multiple ways to remove this. Either an extra damage from Cool Taskmaster or some type of you know whirlwind effect. Or trading in both the Dread Corsair and the Despite. So forcing Nymph into an awkward situation. But we see that he does have Cruel Taskmaster if he decides to use that. Yeah, and I, I suspect he'll wait a turn and uh, on the on the shredder, I mean, and go ahead and bop the the Thorson with the Taskmaster and the Despite. You really don't want to be killing off your Corsair this early, um, especially if he doesn't have anything else mm -hmm. on the board. I just want to keep those stats uh, as lively as you can, especially since he has Battle Rage in hand. That's a solid activation on the turn after, uh, with the Despite being procs, if you would so choose to use it, and that will line up pretty nice with uh, Life Coach's turn six Ancient of Lore. Yeah, and uh, he may. He may go ahead and, oh, he actually opts to go ahead and use the Execute and get the Shredder out of turn early. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, there was multiple ways that he could have done that. The two things that he wanted to make sure he did was develop another creature and swing into uh, the Emperor Thorsan. So that Definitely. way he damages himself for for uh, better Battle Rage uh, efficiency next turn. And also, he gets another creature on the board for better Battle Rage, better battle rage efficiency next turn. So. <laughs> it's not so easy to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really... Uh... I actually like Nymph's play much better. Um, getting that shutter down this earlier, just go ahead and using the execute. He's got options with Taskmaster mm -hmm. and the Death Spite still. I think that was definitely a better play. Yeah. The only thing is that Patron Warriors nowadays have limited removal, so you really have to rely on those yeah, two yeah. executes really heavily. So there isn't really anything much stronger than a 5-5 five five that you'll have to execute in a in a Druid deck. Maybe a Dr. Boom. Sure. But I think Nimsh was running a big game hunter in this patron deck, if I remember correctly. Hmm. I just I have that uh, that image frozen in my head of dogs double uh, <laughs> double BGH and just making the same face as life coach. I can't I can't remember if he actually was playing one. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see battle. Oh, I guess. Oh no! So patient, so sneaky. I guess that doesn't really matter because yeah, not there's not really board. anything big on the board. It does allow him to take out the armor smith, but there could have been other better targets that he could have gotten from Pilot of Shredder to take out an armor smith, like a three-two. So wow. and suddenly uh, Nimsh with uh, an absolute truckload of cards in hand and uh, with intent to use them. <laughs> yeah. So the one thing we do have to note also with the New Age Patron decks is they have a secondary win condition also with Grom Hellscream. So yes, if yes. they manage to put on pressure early, they can end games. And we and saw we that know. earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we know Nimsh is playing uh, two Inner Rage from that game earlier where he closed it out against Sark. Mm -hmm. Very true. So and Nimsh has seven mana. Yeah. Hmm. That Patient Assassin, though, is can be pretty problematic. Uh, with Patient Assassin, I believe it works the same as uh, Dreadmaw, where if a patron's on the board, Patient Assassin will kill the patron before it propagates a new one. Really? Um, that's how uh, Dreadscale works, the Hunter card. I can't sure. remember if it's Asimov or Dreadscale. Yeah, Dreadscale is the 4-2 that uh, yeah, shoots, the, shoots the board for a Yeah, so oh. that's how it works with that. Patient Assassin, I'd imagine it works the same way, since it's pretty much the same type of effect. Huh. Um, so that can be pretty useful. I can't say that I've ever seen a, a Patient get Patient Assassin before. Yeah. 
I played enough Patron Warrior to have gotten <laughs> Patron Assassin quite a bit. Yeah. And Mana Wraith is kind of annoying in this situation. I guess it doesn't really affect him too much because it felt like Ancient of Lore was going to be the go-to play anyway. But it just eliminates options, I suppose. Like a, sure. sludge, like a sludge belcher plus a, uh, a hero power or something along those lines. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter since he could trade the patient assassin into it anyway. But still. Sure. And Nimsh, we're on turn 7. And he is dug about 6 cards deep with Battle Rage, I believe, with both of them. And did Nimsh have another Alkalite uh, earlier in the game? Or has he had this one in his hand? Uh, this one he drew with the battle rage, and he hadn't draw. He hasn't drawn another one, so gotcha. those are the only okay. forms of card card draw that he. he so has, he's so. seen like thirteen ish cards. He's pretty deep in his deck. He is playing two inner rage, so this next turn could be really impactful for him. Well, that's um, actually just game, I think. Yeah, he's going into turn eight, so that's a Grom Hell Scream. Oh goodness, he does have the activation. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Yeah, so Maybe. life coach. He had to think a little bit there whether or not he wanted to play the Belcher, but um, he realizes that, hey, if you have Grom, you have Grom. And Life Coach gives a little bit of a sly smile. He's like, yep, yeah, of course he has it. <laughs> you, you were saying it. He got pretty deep into his deck with those Battle Rages, so right. you have to sort of play around it. You have to make the choice to play around it or to realize if you have it, you have it. I can't really exactly. afford to make a weaker turn by playing around it. And Life Coach takes the risk, doesn't pay off, and... That's Nimsh going up two to zero in the series over Life Coach. Life Coach is on his last leg here. Grom has been putting in work for Nimsh today. Yeah, it has. It definitely has. And that's the scary thing about the new patron is you spend so much time and energy and resources trying to, you know, try and make the board not as impactful with patrons, or you spend so much time trying to remove the patrons. Right. And then all of a sudden you realize that, hey, I'm at 15 health. Hey, he's got Despite <laughs> plus Grom Inner Rage or Grom Cool Task. Exactly. And uh, you're dead, so. And Life Coach is going to throw out the Paladin once again. And Nimsh, last deck, is the Druid. And that's a decent hand if that Darnassus Aspirin sticks. Yeah, Life Coach definitely has the opening to, to deal with it. Um... Nimsh opted not to play for the the strange off curve Darnassus, seeing as he doesn't have any other forms of acceleration or shade or anything like that. So, uh, a solid, a really solid curve coming down from Life Coach. It's it's very difficult for uh, for Druid to deal with multiple knife jugglers on uh, back to back turns mm -hmm. early on in the game, having to either use the removal spell or like give up board or what have you. So, really yeah. strong opening for Life Coach, especially with the pickup of that shredder. Yeah. Oh, the solid juggle. Getting that extra one damage before he trades. What a hero. Yeah. Ooh. So, tough turn for Nim. She has to decide. That knife juggler is very threatening. Especially uh, with the threat of Muster for Battle looming next turn. If he saves the sure. Innervate to try and Innervate out of a an Agent of Lore, then he could take a lot of pressure. If he uses <clears> the Innervate now, then he doesn't have any type of curve to go into the next over the next couple turns sure. to follow up that Drew the Claw if he throws it out now. And Druids nowadays pretty much have been playing standard double combo for as long as we can remember. And mm -hmm. uh, he, if he uh, decides that Savage Roar or saving Savage Roar isn't uh, you know worth giving up the uh, the Innervate, I think uh, we could see a Savage on that Knife Struggler. And we do. Yeah. All right. And, uh, I kind of like that play, honestly. Uh, not having a, a kind of I don't know. Maybe just uh, kind of conceding the the muster turn and going for the the draw on the swipe on uh, on turn five. I can see yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Well. I don't know if you can afford to use the keeper here as sort of a tempo play. Sure, and Nimsh has been watching. He's seen uh, he's seen Life Coach's decks, and he knows yeah. that he's playing a more more greedy Death Rattle centric version of Paladin. So I, I agree. I don't think you can afford to use the Keeper there either. Just yeah. go ahead and hear a power and take your victory, and uh, let him play whatever he's going to next turn and take your war. Yeah. And it turns out to be a good play, especially since he knows. Yeah, there's a lot of silence targets in this deck. Also, uh, gives Life Coach 
like a free pass to play like a power shredder or a true silver champion which trades nicely into whatever you're gonna play so he holds on to the ancient of lore uh, doesn't innervate that out and throws out the druid of the claw instead hmm. it's an interesting read uh seeing that he didn't have the muster on three and uh opting to not go for the, the ancient mm -hmm. um so he's saving the innervates. I can't imagine what for at this point. Um, would essentially just be going for for value on removal spells or. Uh, hmm. I don't know. It's an interesting play. I I don't know that I would have uh, done the same thing, but I think I think you usually want to be protecting your your five five with the druid on the following turn. Yeah. But at the same time, it just it does uh, it does answer shredder so well that you know maybe it's good enough. And we see double BGH coming out from Nimsh. Yeah, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, but at least ladder right now is a... Actually, you'd probably say both ladder and competitive are a pretty good environment because on ladder you face... Even the fast decks that you face with Secret Paladin and Aggro Druid, you're still going to have right. 7 plus attack with Faux Reaver and usually Mysterious Challenger post-Avenge. Exactly, and those new shade decks kind of popping up here and there. Yeah, and with control, you're always going to face 7 attack creatures with you know cards like Dr. Boom or even heavier stuff and some of the more control oriented decks like handlock where double bgh is always going to come in handy sure and uh, i'm starting to get a sense for for how well uh life coach uh had a had a beat on this tournament because he is playing you know double sky goal on the card that we haven't seen at all in uh in recent months and so many people that we've seen so far have been packing double bgh and maybe that was uh a, mm -hmm. a definite consideration in his deck building preparation yeah also another thing uh this could be a good non for nimsh's targeted deck building i believe these guys knew their groups when they were submitting their deck list sure. so nimsh could have looked at his group and said life coach is going to be playing trump's going to be playing both of those guys favor handlock really heavily even dog is a is a handlock player uh, right. quite often so he might have said you know what? i'm just going to put double bgh in my druid and hedge my bets against some of these players playing handlock for sure Lay on hands coming up for life coach. Not the most relevant card in the current state. Uh, he's pretty much got his mana spoken for, uh, being on the aggressive for the next several turns. Mm -hmm. um, life coach may opt to play off curve and just drop a uh, piloted sky golem since he is able to clear and he doesn't want to uh, get blown out by a PGH. Perhaps um, I think that would be I think that would be a pretty fair play. Uh, yeah, not playing it on this turn. But the boom bots also, you know, uh, even if he is getting PGH, still very strong. So I would imagine the, the Shredder and the 1-1 one, one will clear off the 5-5 five, five and then see what Nymph responds with. He doesn't have a whole lot going for him at this point in time uh, after not using that lore early on. Yeah. And with playing the Dr. Boom also, that means three of the mana from Nymph next turn, if he does have BGH, is going to go to that. Right. So, you know, it's still... Powdered Sky Golem, I think, does have a lot of merit. And if he had went for it, still wouldn't have been a poor play for sure and uh nymph definitely has the ability to uh draw if he wants to i i, I can't imagine he would heal against a uh, life coach is really slow and uh, a little clunky uh, paladin deck and he could just opt to uh get the draws in and use one of those bghs now which i, I wouldn't be shocked to see i just don't see another play that's on uh, on par with that power level yeah He's going to draw first, not that it'll change his play, but just might give him a few more options to work with. Sure. And his board still is going to get contested even after the BGA, it's just because of the True Silver Champion equipped and the Boom Boss, but we'll see how much damage those suckers are actually going to do. <laughs> so we'll likely see a, uh, an attack onto the 5-5 five five here to try and reduce those... Uh... reduce the RNG on the, uh, on the Boom Boss, see if he can mm -hmm. take out the BGH and then Perhaps uh, Hero Power and Sky Golem. Um, I can't imagine that you would want to do anything else but get running Sky Golems at this point, and then Aldor in between on the next turn. Um, it, it, seems like it, it feels like such a slow and clunky card that you just want to <laughs> get it out of your hand at the exactly, first possible exactly. moment. You just want it to start getting value. Like at times, Piloted Sky Golem feels like a win more card. Because it doesn't have that yeah, immediate board impact. And so usually when you play it, you're ahead. Or you're so far behind that you know you've either already won or lost the game. So right. I, it's it's one of the things that I dislike the most about Pilot Sky Golem. But in this situation where 
you're sort of neither ahead or behind, like really far ahead or really far behind, it can be a big swing because it's such a tough card to deal with. Absolutely. And I can't imagine that he would have uh, played that card in really any other tournament or maybe even any other group, uh, per se, if uh, you know he had the read that people were playing BGHs in, in force. And uh, you know maybe, especially with Life Coach not bringing Handlock, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, maybe it f- had fallen out of favor for him uh, post world championship, and he hadn't yeah. find, hadn't found a, a comparable version. Uh, yeah. Maybe he just, you know, had the uh, definitely had some information on some other players, and mm-hmm. this is what he came up with. It's gonna be a force of nature clear here. Cork on elite is actually slightly below average for stats, I think. For a four drop, might be right on the average. I think four, the average is right around four four. Sure. For a four drop, there are a lot that skew it in either direction, like Hungry Dragon being the best and a card like Keeper of the Grove being the worst. Right. Um. But that's still the the attack side is is on the heavy side, which sort of favors Life Coach since he seems to be the aggressor in this matchup. And runner runner pilot Sky Golem, that's tough to deal with. It certainly is, especially if the Kelp is out on deck. Uh, if if Nimsh doesn't find a way to uh, get rid of this board on this particular turn, it's going to get really weird for him. Uh, he does have uh, 19 potential damage in hands. On board, um, he may opt to go for the Thorson. Uh, I I can't imagine that he has the ability to to do anything but try and clear. He can, yeah, he can keep her plus force to take out the piloted Sky Golem, and I guess the other tree it wouldn't be that great. So it's just Savage Roar seems like sure. the better option here, because more than likely he'll be able to take out whatever comes out of the. Pilot at Sky Golem, we'll see... Nope! He can do it, but he'll have to take another 3 damage. Oh, boy. Interesting. So, Nimsh has already used two Force of Nature, is correct? Uh, yes, and he's used both Savage Rose as well. He's out of combo pieces. Mm. Yeah, he used that earlier on the on the Knife Shogger. That's right, on string 3. Um, man, this is uh, it's pretty brutal from... Uh, Nimsh's perspective. Life Coach still having initiative. Uh, could opt to go ahead and stick the Kel'Thuzad since he drew a, uh, a stronger two drop mm-hmm. in the form of a mini bot. Um, th- what is he? I think, yeah, he can just slam Kel'Thuzad here. You're not worried about anything. Both combo pieces are gone. Yeah, and he, uh, yeah, definitely. So he would have to, like, double swipe it or swipe and then trade in his shade? Yeah, something super inefficient and gross. Yeah. So there is a full clear here for Nimsh if if he decides to do that, but he'd give up, you know, almost his his entire board. He could swipe, trade in his shade, and then either just play Emperor Thorsan or keep her down the shield and mini bot. Sure. Oh, nope, he missed. The laser <laughs> missed. <laughs> Come on, man. I think it's the production that's controlling the laser. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it's this person who's spectating the, the life uh, coach match. So he's going to do that and trade it in. Stick the Thoris in. I really like sticking the Thoris in there, getting the body on the table, forcing uh, forcing life coach to trade into it. He got the reduction. He's going to be able to draw next turn. And, uh, you know, suddenly it's not looking so bad for Nimsh because he does have the silence for the, the second half of the shredder. Yeah. The, and, the thing is, is he just has so, such a low life total and his win conditions are just yes. out the window. Right, right, and he did just pick up a second. Life coach just picked up a uh, second true silver, which definitely doesn't help that situation. He may just decide to go all in, knowing that Nymph doesn't have any combo pieces. Yeah, I'm gonna play it safe, regardless, just because uh, he does have uh, those taunts to protect his board, yeah. his life total. So, and he preps the true silver, which leads me to believe that he's planning on using lay enhance next turn, and he wants For to sure. be able to get that mana out of the way now instead of just floating it. So. Uh, that's a, a pretty good play there. And the only thing it's vulnerable to is Harrison Jones, but maybe you know, calling out Nimsha not not having a Harrison Jones in his deck if he sure. made the read that double BGH was a thing. There's less room for other tech cards. 
Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And a lot of people have been uh, moving away from Harrison and Druid just because it is pretty easy to punish. And having a 5-4 uh, uh, in a deck that's like supposed to be the most efficiently statted minion deck in the game or what have you, yeah. playing off curve isn't exactly, uh, isn't exactly the greatest thing to be doing. And getting rid of a one-charge Coghammer against Secret Paladin usually isn't the best <laughs> sure enough. use of your five mana. Light's Justice. Yeah, Light's Justice is great if you can get it, but a lot of times Secret Paladins are just like, I don't even care. Yeah, I just don't care. I'll just, you know, go ahead and... Competitive spirit, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, Nimsh does manage to clear the board, but he's completely out of resources. Plays that second BGH as a tempo play. And Nimsh might as well innervate out this turn Axis Aspirant because with no cards in this deck, the innervate's going to struggle to find use. Right. Hmm. So he does find a muster, but uh, so most likely he's a uh, he on hand's turn. I guess you could uh, technically have killed off the Keeper and maybe Aldor the 4 2 or what have you, but yeah. definitely no reason to, to play risky like that if you can just wipe the board. Yep. And barring an additional keeper or something like that from Nymsh, uh, Tyrion should be able to close this game out almost single-handedly on this next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd be inclined to take out the BGH, but... Uh, yeah. Probably just take out the highest attack creature. Looks like he takes out the keeper. If you attack the BGH, I think he wastes more, more healing potential. Sure. But I guess it doesn't really matter in the end. He'd go yeah, down to... it doesn't doesn't matter too much, and he yeah. may be giving uh, maybe giving himself the opportunity to get access to that one more damage on the board a turn earlier. Uh, yeah, having, having the Tyrion get killed, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a he hides it behind a taunt though. Though now that four damage is going to get extra value for sure, for sure. Many bot, pretty solid pick up there. Yeah. Just for the Belcher instead, just a peacekeeper. That's not okay. I like that play. You know that he knows that Nimsh is out of resources, so he can you know sort of play that little bit more of a grindy game instead of exactly just playing those huge creatures. Tyrion's just going to be, you know, that trump card, the one that he puts down and there you no go. Pun intended. Game ends. <laughs> yeah, no, right. no pun intended. Since Trump is in this group, Trump's in the losers bracket though. Strong now. <laughs> Struggling, so I don't know if you'd want a trump card in this situation. Dang, harsh. And Wrath, I imagine this is for one. Yeah. Needs to start digging a deck. Doctor Boom picked up. It looks like a good pickup from Nimsh's, Nimsh's perspective, but Life Coach has the big game hunter tucked away. The thing about Big Game Hunter is his curve is pretty poor other than that, but at this point, I don't think you're even worried about that. You're so far ahead. You have card advantage after exactly. this turn. You're most likely going to have board advantage because even if these boom bots do a lot of work, I still don't think he's going to be able to find a full board clear with all these 1-1s. One right, and he would have to... He's already used the swipe, which he drew off the top. You'd have to pick up another one, and then, yeah, the, the amount of cards that he would need in rapid succession are... Are pretty egregious. He also <laughs> has used a uh, double ancient of war. Wow, an ancient of war coming out. Yeah. I don't even think it's going to be that useful. He's got Aldor Peacekeeper to contest it. Right. Or to bring it down. Aldor, it's huge. I mean, he could even just probably play Tyrion against the ancient of war. Exactly. And there wouldn't be anything Nymphs could do except for top deck the keeper. He does have, still have second keeper. Yes, he does. So, and even then, they're still being a 6-6 six, six on the board, which doesn't line up very nicely against the Ancient of War. Nimsh can't afford to use his hero power to do the extra damage. And Life Coach wastes no time. Throws down the Tyrion Forgery. It's not something you see every day. The, the snap play from Life Coach. Yeah. You know that that play is the best play <laughs> by a, a large margin if Life Coach does it in a snap call like that. And... Finds the Azure Drake, but Pile to Treader. He is alive, but he realizes that it's going to be really tough for him to try and push through this. And Nimsh goes ahead and concedes. 
which means Life Coach does take the first win in this best of five. He's still down two to one, but does take a victory. Yes, he does. And Life Coach still has Mage, the Mech Mage, Mage and Druid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, Mage and Druid. And Nim still just has his own Druid remaining. So, you know, Life Coach does have some comeback potential here. Mech Mage. Oh, can do a lot of work against druids. And we didn't see too much of the mech mage. Um, we saw pretty much all of the, the standard early game cards. Uh, we didn't see any blast mages. We didn't see any anything crazy like a piloted sky golem or a uh, higher curve antinitis or boom. But uh, mm -hmm. I, would, I would imagine that it's it's pretty safe to assume that antinitis yeah. and boom are probably up there in that list. Um, Unless, he ended uh, up getting blown out pretty quickly, or he ended up blowing out the game pretty quickly. Yeah, with uh, a double snow chugger. With the double snow chugger, and then getting fireball. the mirror entity yeah, yeah, get yeah. it into the fireball. So we didn't. We only got to see about probably ten cards in that deck. Hmm. All right. Jumping into game number four here, and looks like Life Coach is going to throw out. Druid, yeah, that's Life Coach's perspective. And Nimsh is going to throw a Druid as well. So, good old fashioned Druid Mirror. Just like the good old days. Just like the good old days. The, the Mirror has become quite. It's changed quite a bit with the uh, addition of Darnassus Aspirant. The early games aren't as straightforward. For sure. The turn shows don't just play themselves because there's a lot of depth in right. you know when to play Darnassus Aspirant. And there are still blowouts in this matchup where one player gets ramp and the other doesn't, which could be the case in this situation, but it's not as likely as before since both players have six forms of ramp. Sure. With Innervate, Darnassus Aspirant, and Wild Growth instead of four, which improves the odds of, you know, being an even matchup from the get go. Right. Pretty uh, interesting, interesting plays all around as far as uh, how the coin has been used with Druid all day. Uh, I don't think I've seen a Darnassus get coined out once. Um, pretty, pretty interesting in these in these scenarios, and it's almost I think it's been right almost every single time. Mm -hmm. and both players uh, starting out with Wrath and Darnassus. Uh, I would say we're in for the uh, the long haul here. Yeah. This will really be like the old days, like the good old fashioned <laughs> Druid slugfest. We can even go pre. Everyone runs double wild growth and double combo druid back in oh, the wow. ancient watcher days. Way back there. I was a I was a little tight back then. <laughs> <sighs> with my with my only zoo deck. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I do wonder, Malfurion. I mean, it feels Wrath is just. I feel like there's no other. You can't really afford to keep her this turn. Right. Yeah, you just have to clear out the the aspirant and uh, yeah, set up Drake for next turn. Keep him off of uh, any potential crazy six drop plays. Definitely don't want to silence the Darnassus aspirant. I recommend against it. Value. It's like here. Play a 2-4 for 4 mana. Give your opponent an extra mana crystal. <laughs> Probably not the most playable card in LOE. Nope. Yeah, and he settles on the the Wrath there. Uh, a lot of times what Life Coach does is uh, he'll think about his future turns as opposed to Absolutely. you know thinking about the turn that he's on now. If he has an automatic play with a Wrath on whatever's on the board... Most of the time, he's not thinking about that. He's thinking about, you know, what what is he going to play the next turn? What what is does he think his opponent's going to play with five mana? And Druid of the Claw is does come out for Nymph, so good thing he held onto the coin and match going to match up pretty nicely against this Azure Drake, especially since Nymph is going to be able to hide his own Azure Drake behind it. For sure, yeah, that accomplishes like a duality of things. I really like that he uh, really like that he played that. The Druid of the Claw first, instead of going for the, the open board Azure Drake that uh, I'm sure somebody <laughs> would have been tempted to do. Yeah. Definitely, definitely a, a solid ordering. Yeah. Usually those taunt creatures, you want to try and uh, play those second. A lot of times it, it can be pretty intuitive to play the draw cards first because sure. it could change your play, but with Druid, you, you sort of know 
you know your deck inside and out, and you know what your conditions are, and you're not going to really draw a five drop that you're going to want to play on an empty board more so than either Drew to the Claw right. or Azure Drake. So you want to be able to have the opportunity to trade into something with your Drew to the Claw and then hide your Azure Drake behind it to protect it from being traded into to you know For protect sure. that spell power. So yeah, I really like the ordering of things there. It can seem unintuitive at first to players that are used to drawing first and being right. told that drawing first is always the right thing. <laughs> Definitely a thing we hear a lot. Yeah. Especially nowadays. People ingrain that into my head when I was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. learning how to play Hearthstone. <laughs> I remember uh, the young Hamlock version of myself. Definitely end of turn tapping every turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have two extra mana? Did I <laughs> tap this turn? Nope. Sweet. Free card. <laughs> and uh, no BGH on Ninja's side. After life coach dropping that that boom, he was gonna dig for it this oh, turn. Oh but... no! It was the next card. Oh no! Innervate. That is pretty rough, especially since now this Doctor Boom is most likely gonna get value, unless life coach decides to like swipe into it or something. Hmm. Um. Okay. I imagine just being ancient of lore and then trade, but. He might try and get some work done with these boom bots. He could do enough damage to, to be able to innervate out of hero power or something along those lines with the Ancient of Lore to take it down. Yeah, I really liked yeah, your first suggestion of just playing Lore and solidifying your advantage. I definitely like. Um, he's already used a Drake. Uh, you know, he's he could have a swipe that doesn't, you know, do a, a ton. Still have a still have another creature on board. I don't know. He'd still have initiative either way. Um, if he's using if he's using a removal spell to and most of his mana to clear that. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I would definitely lure here. He's gonna go for the boom bots. Ooh, he's got to go quick because these animations they take some time. Okay, he's gonna go for the keeper play, uh, but then he doesn't play anything else. There's no development going on, and now double keeper, the tempo keeper. Wow. Okay, he does have the savage and swipe in hand. Okay. Um, BGH uh, did not come out for for Nimsh. We know that he drew it, but at the same time, uh, from Life Coach's perspective, this is definitely an opening that you want to abuse. So I actually like that play. I like that play a lot. Um, I think I think I would have been tempted to lore uh, just because you know we saw the BGH coming out from uh, from Nimsh's perspective. Mm -hmm. But having no information and not seeing a uh, BGH come down on your on your boom, I think you have to you have to kind of push the pace of the game. Yeah, and. Not too many keeper targets in Druid. That's uh, true. Pile of Treader is one of them. It's sort of an emergency card against Emperor Thor's hand. If you have no way to absolutely remove it, you can silence it. But a lot of times it is played just as sort of that tempo play to uh, usually remove something, which we saw for the first one. Sure. Or, you know, put that extra pressure on the board because a 2-4 can be hard to remove, especially against Druid who has an empty board. And Definitely. BGH swipe looks like it's going to be the play, and Nimsh realizes that he wants to play the BGH first because he actually values his health more than he values the body of the BGH, which is a bit interesting. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that at this point, uh, when it's so easy for, for Life Catch to take out the BGH. Um, I'd imagine we're definitely going to see a lore this turn, perhaps a, uh, an innervate swipe face play, uh, if he is able to play combo uh, already on mana. I, mm. You could uh, could potentially save it for something uh, bigger in the future. Um, he's going to see what he draws first, though. Yeah, it depends on the draw. Powder Shredder, Shade of Nax, Ramus. So nothing that indicates that he's going to be able to kill his opponent next turn. He can just hero power here and still preserve the two creatures on board. Would Savage Roar swipe in the game if he did that? He'd be able to push in for two more. He's putting down to 17. Hero power next turn would bring him back up to 18. So it'd be seven plus six, thirteen. He would have he would have eighteen damage exactly next turn with Savage or Swipe Hero Power. Mm, if he just hero powers down the BGH. But And if he were to if he were to swipe this turn, which is a bit a bit greedy, but he might want to keep the body on board. Huh. He would swipe him nineteen to fifteen, and he would hero power come back to our turn. So he is gonna swipe, or is he just gonna play yeah, swipe. Sure. Yeah. So we do see the swipe come out. I like that play. I like that play a lot actually. So he goes to fifteen. And if uh, Nimsh does end up here powering, uh, 
that'll put him within 14. He'll have the Savage Rook come up for 6, 11, 13. So that would be exactly full if he does just hero power and doesn't taunt uh, from Life Coach's perspective. So I think uh, I think that's a solid play. Nimsh does have a lot of answers, though. Yeah. The one thing, though, we talked about not many Keeper targets in Druid, but one of the ones that is run sometimes in Druid, but not all the time, Nimsh has with Ancient of War. Definitely. So now that Life Coach has no Keepers, this Ancient of War is going to do quite a bit of work. If he plops it down right now, Life Coach is going to need a lot to, to have to trade into it. He might even have to use Savage Roar as a resource, so... Yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, if you were to play Ancient of War, I think you would have to play the Shredder behind it because you do have combo in hand. Uh, actually, you have you have du access to double combo with the Innervate. He could just so, play Ancient of War, and if Life Coach can't deal with it, he wins next turn with double combo. He does. So he's going to put Life Coach on having a way to kill this Ancient of War. Ancient of Wars. Because if he doesn't... Wow, this is crazy. If he doesn't Savage Roar clear here... Oh, he does hit the Wrath, though. Okay. Uh, but Wrath will still force Life Coach to utilize his his board to clear this. So he could trade in his board, Wrath down, and then develop Pile to Shredder Shade of Naxxramas, which is still a pretty decent play. Sure. Life Coach is... Uh... <laughs> Initiate Life Poach. Life Coach pose. <laughs> yeah. Life pose. Life pose. Yeah, my brain got a little bit ahead of itself there. New, new Twitch emote for sure. Yeah, I th he already has like six emotes that are, yeah. <laughs> that are dedicated to just. How much himself. more do you want? Right. Yeah. Like from every angle, he's got one that's like head on. <laughs> got it all covered. He's even got a, a life coach pose emote that's him from behind. It just looks like him with his hair. <laughs> like the silhouette of the chair. I like. Yeah. It. Living Roots. Wow, okay. So that was uh, that was some older tech that we've been seeing less of. Uh, people opted to go for maybe one more big creature on the top end as opposed to the Living Roots, but uh, Life Coach favoring it. And uh, the Keeper will stay alive, and he'll go ahead and kill off an Ancient of War. So okay. it's in a, uh, in a pretty bad spot, comparatively speaking. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Just combo this turn, then combo next turn. What could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, so, Life Coach does have 6 damage on his side of the board with Hero Power. That's 7 plus the 6, that would be 13. So, Nymph is still dead if uh, he just Hero Powers. Um, he has to know that. Uh, he definitely would calculate a Savage Roar lead flow. Yeah. At this point, you can play around Savage Roar. You just can't play around both. So, Great. And I, yeah. I suspect he may just heal. Ancient of Lore heal, yeah. His hand is definitely a bit questionable at this point. I don't think he can win without uh, the double Savage Roar combo. He actually is going to go ahead and clear with Force. All right. Making sure he clears out the... Keep the girl first, good sequencing, in case something like an Anoyertron or an Unstable sure. Ghoul pops out. I know your child would be the only one that punishes him there, though. But and now he's got to make the choice: do you charge with the Druid of the Claw? Hmm. He's he's very deep in his deck, and he hasn't seen a single force of nature, so I suspect he would just charge that in. Uh, I could be wrong, but maybe the stats are maybe the stats are worth. Um... I think regardless, he has lethal next turn with the the shade, so he would need he would need something pretty ridiculous to. Yeah, it's almost no reason not to charge it in there. Yeah. And I think there's no way out of this one for Nimsh. Because he has to Ancient of War heal no matter what. Which leaves him with five total remaining mana with the Innervate, which doesn't allow him to do anything. Yeah, with no way to take out the Druid of the Claw in this turn, that should be that should be a game for Life Coach. Yeah. Uh, Nymph can try because he doesn't know for sure that Life Coach has the Savage Roar, but it's just sure. really likely at this stage. And suddenly, from a up a two zero, as a uh, as a Druid with your anchor, I've been in that scenario many times, and let me tell you, it's nightmarish at times. And uh, 
you know, life coach tying it up two to two with Mech Mage facing down Druid, which obviously isn't, you know, the most favorable matchup in the world for Druid. So not at all. Not interesting. At all. He's run it back so handily. Mm -hmm. And so he is going to heal and most likely innervate out the powder shredder just to get the most power on the board. But we know that Nipsch knows it too. The force of nature, or sorry, the savage or, or force of nature would be enough to end the game there. And Life Coach ties it up 2-2. Two to two. Going into game number 5. You said it. Dimsh uh, will be playing the Druid. And Life Coach just has the Mech Mage remaining. How exciting. How exciting indeed. <laughs> just like this G2A commercial. <laughs> Form-fitting clothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, getting right into it. Game number five, Life Coach versus Nimsh. There's the Antonitis, and of course, I called it earlier, the Pilot of Sky Golem. It is in the building. We we knew. We knew deep down. Yeah. We were playing that in every deck. Yeah. He really loves that card. He really does. And not the greatest of curves for Life Coach here. Uh, no mechs until turn four, which makes Tinkertown Technician an awkward card to have in the hand. Sure. Fireball early on is okay if Nimsh innervates out an early Druid of the Claw. Sure. But, you know, uh, not as likely, and you'd rather just have a good curve than, you know, an emergency spell for a fringe case scenario. Right. And uh, this curve is, I think it's deceivingly good against Druid on the coin, uh, simply because you can play the Scientist on turn one to contend with the Aspirin. Um, from from Nimsh's perspective, Nimsh coming out with wild growth, Asperin, and Innervate, and a second wild growth. Oh my God! The All bananas. the ramp in the world, but there is such a thing as too much ramp. <laughs> is there though? <laughs> I yeah, there definitely is. There definitely is. Yeah. And uh, so we'll probably see a uh, a mad scientist come out on turn one from uh, Life Coach and uh, a ping immediately after if he doesn't get anything comparable. Like a uh, like a frostbolt per se. He innervated out a Darnassus Aspirin on turn one. Yes, he did. That is very bold. Hmm. I don't even know if bold is the correct word for it. Hmm. Reckless. I I actually think that if he plays a oh god if he plays a mad scientist this turn, Nimsh has to assume he has a coin play. Hmm. I don't think there's any point in the game if you have double wild growth in hand that you're gonna have more value uh, with Darnassus Aspirin. Like, it's. Uh, I think you. Yeah, that's that's a tough situation. I don't I don't think you can ever not play the two three on turn one, despite having a, a an apparent lack of mana efficiency on the on the coming turns. Yeah, I suppose. Now he's gonna be in an awkward situation where. He's going to have to face down a mirror entity. Right. With only Drew to the Claws as the minion in his hand. Yeah, that, that draw that Nimsh had without the coin is uh, very, very clunky. Uh, I'm not, he's definitely not feeling it. No. I've got the beast in my well, he's going to throw out the BGH into the mirror entity. Uh, Nimsh does run double BGH in his Druid, so we've seen that yeah. in the deck. So, uh, he's not quite as hesitant to throw out the BGH as a sort of tempo play in order to get rid of that mirror entity. Yeah, I really like that play going into the turn 5, Druid of the Claw. Um, we know that it's probably getting fireballed, but uh, regardless, that it's probably the, the most solid play you can make. Um I like to tempo Tinker Town as well, just playing on curve and not having, not trying to get greedy with uh, the spare part or what have you. Yeah, like that having that body to come back to when you're uh, planning on using the removal spell is, is a really good play. And that ping is just so inconsequential. If you play the Clockwork Gnome and then ping, right, right. it's just it really doesn't do anything. There's the second BGH. So oh, now, man. do you play the Temple BGH again? Yeah, you you definitely do. You, um, especially yeah, since it's already used the removal spell. You have to. <laughs> it's it's wild growth. The plague, I guess. This Doctor Boom's gonna do work when it comes out on turn seven, though. Yes, it is. And life coach, he, he look at that. <laughs> he's like, oh yes, <laughs> Doctor Boom for free. And yeah, you oh. know the the power play is just keep coming for life coach. 
really he's got do. A, he's got a good curve here with either Mechanical Yeti or Paladin Shredder plus the Clockwork Gnome. I don't think he can really... I, I mean, he can consider Frostbolt, but you play you just play Clockwork Gnome after that, it feels... Yeah, you just... You consider it and then, you know, politely brush it under the rug and uh, mm -hmm. just play your Pilot as Shredder. Um, I think yeah. I think he'd definitely play Shredder this turn, especially seeing how, how far behind Nymph is on card advantage and uh, how hungry for answers he actually is. So. Mm -hmm. it seems solid. Um, I mean, you, you may just want the 5 toughness off of the Eddie. I think either are really, really comparable, but definitely goes with the Shredder. Yeah. Because Shredder could be up to, like, 7 toughness. That's a lot of toughness. It, it is. It's very tough. Uh, okay. I mean, as much as you want to kill the Shredder on one turn, can you really do that? I think he just wants to get rid of mech synergy. That's the big thing here. That's true. That's true. And, you know trying to stop the bleeding ancient of war on ancient of war sorry on curve feels really great but you know, nipsh is going to yeah, be a little that, sad here that. that just the power plays are going to keep coming yeah for life coach sand is in no way lacking stats um i i don't know how uh nipsh is going to be able to recover from this without drawing multiple cards in one turn off, mm -hmm. uh, off of the floor or something. And even then, he's going to be so low that any burn spell would finish him off. And this boom is coming down next turn? Man, that's just brutal. Huh. He can't opt to clear here with Fireball. But, you know, Dr. Boom is just really hard to pass up, especially since he knows that he can't get the game, you know, sort of swung on him by a BGH because both BGHs are gone. Sure. Um, All of I that think, doubt leaves. Yeah, I think you're onto something with the board clear. I really like, uh, since you have a Frostbolt in hand, you have another burn spell, I really like just using the Fireball and pinging and maybe playing a, uh, maybe playing a Cogmaster or uh, just buffing buffing the, uh, the Sky Golem if you so choose and just uh, running yeah. the 3-3 in, doing 7 damage to the face and then, you know, just recovering and playing Boom next turn. He really doesn't have any reason to go in on Boom. Um, and give uh, Nimsh like a, a weird potential way into the game, maybe. But mm -hmm. this is, uh, yeah, this is probably the best way to just choke him out of any advantage. He can even push six damage here with the Piloted Sky Golem. So just getting right. closer and closer. Yeah. And Nimsh really needs something substantial off the top. But Judah the Claw is decent. It is going to block some damage. Okay. And if he. He can't, he can't actually, in good conscience, charge that unless it's going in a minion. <laughs> in good conscience? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's something I always feel guilty about at night as I'm laying there trying to sleep. <laughs> oh, my Just God. I shouldn't have charged that Druid of the Claw. <laughs> Too real, man. Too real. Yeah. Crowd favorite? I think that one's called. I forgot called. that was even a card. Honestly. Yeah. Gains plus one, plus one for every minion with Battle Cry you play. And for the first time in the game, the board is actually clear. Yeah. But not for long. Yeah, but Nimsh has a wild growth, and Life Coach has a plethora of options. He's going to act like he has more than one thing to play. <laughs> and I just played him. But in reality, Dr. Boom looks like it's going to be the deal breaker here. Uh, Nimsh... I... So with the ping, there's 10 damage available. So he can Ancient of Lore for a draw and then hear power and hit the face and hope Life Coach doesn't have a single point of damage or hope that the Boom Bots, neither of the Boom Bots hit face for, you know, two or more. Yeah, he has, unfortunately he has to heal just because uh, he saw the Fireball come out already. So you kind of have to play for the Frostbolt, I guess, from his perspective. But at the same yeah. time, like, even if you're drawing, like, what are you really drawing into? Um, you use both your BGHs. I, I feel like this Boom is probably just going to close the game out and Nipsch knows it. Yeah. So, uh, there is a potential lethal here if he the boom goes face for four, but I think that's a little bit too risky of a play. You can protect this this body. Sure. Um, of the Doctor Boom by just frost bolting the Ancient of Lore, and you know smacking face and developing Yeti and Spider Tank. Yeah. Even if he even if he just leaves it up. Um, yeah, it's pretty much 
no way. Nimsh is drawing dead at this point, and uh, it looks like Life Coach is going to take this series. That's you know, pretty crazy to think. He was. Uh, I thought he was going to be down and out. He took. He lost the first two games very quickly. Well, quickly for Life Coach's standards. <laughs> Definitely. But he did lose those first two games really quickly, and you know, Nibs just couldn't find anything to do with the with the Druid. Couldn't find a victory with three chances. And yeah, an, an impressive uh, an impressive display for Mechmage, the deck that you know we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, for sure. Life Coach making a good read with bringing that deck into the tournament, and it's definitely going to pay off. Life Coach takes the victory, and also he's the first player to move out of Group C. So he is the uh, going to be the first seed from Group C, going coming out with a two record, which means going into the playoff stage next week, uh, he will be um, in like that first seed. So he'll play against the second seed from another group. Uh, which means that the the next two matchups are set. Uh, well, mostly. Um, coming up in the next matchup, we're going to have the losers match between uh, Dog and Trump. And the winner of that match will go on to face Nymphs in the decider match to see the second player who is going to move on from Group C. Uh, I'll try and post the brackets here in the chat so you guys can uh, catch those. Uh, but we are going to have to go to a quick break before we jump into the next match. Uh, again, it is going to be Dog versus Trump. It is an Eliminate Nation match, which means the loser is out of the tournament. So don't go anywhere, guys. More Hearthstone Champions League continues right after this. <laughs> 